episode of Mind Pump, your favorite fitness and health podcast. We know it's your favorite. In the world. So we answered questions asked by listeners like you. But the way we open the episode is by mentioning current events, having fun conversation with each other. Sometimes we talk about our sponsors. Here's what went down in today's episode of Mind Pump. We started out by talking about signs all of us recognize mm. when it's time to change signs, course. Signs, signs everywhere. With signs, you're getting fat. Watch out. Yeah, so that's what it was. Signs yeah. that were, maybe we need to stop with all the snacking. Yeah. Uh, then uh, Adam brought up a story told by Dave Ramsey. He's a an economist. Uh, we talked about churchgoers getting citations in America, believe it or not. What's wrong with you guys? Justin brought up a Saturday Night Live and how they did everything through whomp, whomp, whomp. Zoom. Yeah, I guess it didn't turn out too well. We talked about our Easter and how it was all done virtually with our families, but it was still a good time. Uh, I talked about the Guinness Book of World Records. A brand new record was set for bench pressing underwater. Uh, we talked about how wild animals are coming back to the city uh, because, you know, everybody's at home right now, not going out. Adam brought up strip clubs. Virtual strip clubs. All right. Uh, then I talked about getting greens in the diet. I've been eating less vegetables than ever. Part of it is because vegetables are perishable. I'm not trying to go to the grocery store every single day. They're also sometimes hard to find. So I've been drinking Organifi's green juice once or twice a day, far more than I ever have, to help uh, make up the difference. Their green juice is made by organic vegetables, freeze-dried, so they're nutrient-dense, you mix it in water. Actually, tastes Taste really, delicious. really good. Uh, Organifi is one of our sponsors, and we got a hookup for you. Here's how you get that discount: go to Organifi. So that's O R G A N I F I dot com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump for twenty percent off. They have the green juice, but they have other products on there as well. Then we talked about our other sponsor, Mir, and how they're donating five dollars for every Camp Cup that they sell. Make sure you go on the Mirror website. Check out all of their products. They make high-quality uh, mm. cups um, and insulated uh, beverage holders. Um, and again, Kids thermoses, which we also have on mindpumpmedia.com. That's right. Um, but great discounts uh, through Mind Pump. And, of course, they're donating right now. So here's how you get the discount. Go to mirror.com. That's M-I-I-R.com. Use the code Mind Pump. You'll get 25% off your order. Then we talk about our uh, upcoming antibody test results. We haven't got them yet. But we're excited to check them out. And then we talked about the movie Top Gun. That'll be coming out at the end of the year. It's good times. Yeah. Then uh, we got into answering the questions. The first question was, how do I fix hip shift? So hip shift is when you squat or you do a, you know, like a deadlift and your hips kind of move to one side. So we talk about remedies for that with exercise. The next question, this person wants to know how to transition into resistance training after an injury. So we talk about that. The next question, this person wants to know if there's any truth that an imbalance in your microbiome <clears throat> can be causing depression and anxiety. Uh, so we talk about how your microbiome might be connected to how you feel. And the the, the final question, uh, this person wants to know what there, what's something that we've taken for granted uh, during these weird times and uh, something we want to change when things go back uh, to normal. So we talk about that at the end of the episode. Also, this month, two of our correctional exercise mobility programs, MAPS Prime and MAPS Prime Pro, are 50% off. Now, both programs require no equipment at all. So you can get the program like MAPS Prime, MAPS Prime Pro, follow them at home, and work on mobility and connectivity. Now, MAPS Prime teaches you and trains you to get your own individualized warm-up session before your workout. This is very important because you may have muscle imbalances. You may have issues you need to work on specifically before you do your squats, deadlifts, bench presses, and all those other awesome exercises. Now, MAPS Prime Pro, purely correctional. This program teaches you how to do correctional exercise to fix areas of pain and to improve mobility around specific joints. Again, they're both 50% off. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code Prime 50. That's P R I M E 50. No space for the discount. And it's t shirt time. Ah, oh, shit, Doug. You know it's my favorite time of the week. Oh, yeah. We have five winners Shall we is? for iTunes and two winners for Facebook. The iTunes winners are Dodge Kev, 
Chili Belly 25, Soldier of Fantasy Football, Shake and Bake, and Cole Mom. For Facebook, we have Jillian Warwick and Jesse Hermiller. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. Do you guys have a, a sign? Because everybody, I think, has a, own, their own personal sign or signal when they know that uh, it's time to reverse action, reverse course with diet and lack of activity. Oh, yeah. like, do you have like something that, like some people <laughs> have like a favorite pair of jeans oh, yeah. or they put their weight belt on or like, oh, this is uh, two do. notches too. What's yours? So mine's, a, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I think we've talked, like it's been a while actually since we talked about this. I, I lose muscle like as fast or faster than I put body fat on. Mm. So for me, it's it's uh, the way I fill out my extra large t shirts, my arms. Mm. Uh, I can I can uh, I can go off the diet a little bit, but if I'm training good still, um, I'll still I'll just be thicker, thicker but still muscular. You feel I, the snugness around. Yeah, there. still I'll still be snug yeah. in the t shirts. I'll still look like a buff fit guy, right? Even if I'm a little bit higher body fat percentage. But the minute I fall off of training hard consistently and if the diet does that too it doesn't take that many weeks probably two weeks when this starts to happen where i throw on that extra large t-shirt that i normally fill out mm. especially the arms and there's a gap in there like yeah. that's that's the <laughs> like oh sh- gotta get my shit together type of deal so you have one justin yeah i just when i look at myself in the mirror i'm like you're a fat fuck no you don't <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, look at this what is that a little pat you know yeah. on my stomach right that what, that's when you get the dick do yeah you know what a dick do is a dick do yeah mm. it's when your stomach sticks out more than your dick do oh yeah uh, <laughs> I mm, mine never happens to me. So, so mine is a weird one. Okay, so if I'm if I sleep on my back, then I may or may not snore. Sometimes I snore, and it's annoying to, for my partner. Right, they're gonna wake me up or whatever. When I start to snore, even if I'm sleeping on my side, that's when I know it's time. <laughs> this, this was happening last night. <laughs> so last night, the first time, you know, Jessica, like you're snoring, you're snoring, and I'm like I'm sleeping on my side, so I'm like oh fuck. So mm-hmm. I, okay, I adjust myself a little bit. Third time, hey, hey, you're st- the, the 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 final time. Wake up, you're snoring, he's yelling at me. Wake up, you're snoring, and I'm sleeping on my stomach. Oh wow! With my head turned, so I'm like, all right, my tongue is getting too fat. Remember that article I shared with you guys? <laughs> oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that's that's why you snore when you start gaining a little body fat. Your tongue <laughs> Your actually tongue gets larger. Yeah, gets that's, that's fatter. Yeah. So I'm getting a fatter tongue, and that's not cool. So. I'm going to not buy potato chips anymore. I had a, I had a story yeah. I wanted to share with you guys because uh, we just recently released the the Peter Schiff episode. Oh, I loved it. Uh, yeah, one of, For sure, one of, if not my favorite yes. um, interview we've done. Um, it was really, really good. Yes. I just, and here and here's the thing. When we were- It's a hard uh, message for people to take. Uh, it is. It is. But, but it was ring true. And this is why I wanted to share this story because um, I know it hit probably pretty hard for a lot of people and maybe even nag some people out. And when I was doing all my my personal homework, each of us, you know, anytime we have an interview, everyone's kind of doing their own research and reading, uh, watching, you know, looking up stuff on our guests. And, you know, while I was doing that, like I, I found like, you know, who Peter's like kind of antagonist is, right? Uh, and that's Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey and him have gone back and forth uh, quite a few times. Um, in fact, I, uh, a lot of probably how Peter really started to explode was, Dave Ramsey back in like 2007 called Peter an idiot for his prediction on what happened to uh, the housing crisis. Which turned out to be correct. Right. <laughs> and and Dave Ramsey at that time was much bigger than Peter Schiff. Mm. So he had uh, a lot more um, people following and listening to him. And then he comes out and he says that. I think that had a lot to do with helping, helping him actually catapult to the mm. size he is now. So anyways... Dave was sharing a story the other day, and Dave has more of a uh, kind of an optimistic uh, outlook on the economy. His uh, argument to what uh, the things that Peter Schiff says about it's inevitable the direction we're going with the money and crashing is that we're just a way more sophisticated uh, economy now, and there's too many safeguards to ever allow something like the depression to happen again. And so that's kind of how he counters it. But he did say some things, though, in agreement to Peter where they align. And he says, this is the way I'm talking about this to people right now is everybody is getting a a phone call. Everyone's getting a call right now. And it's up to you to make the decision if you're going to answer or not. And then he goes in to tell this story. And Dave Ramsey's like, I think in his fifties or sixties, even 
And he goes in to tell a story about when he was uh, working with his father in the early 70s. And his dad was uh, rebuilding a deck. And his job as his son was, as they were tearing up the old nails in this deck to rebuild, he would collect all these old nails. And he says, you know, that is an example of my father's uh, reaction to the Great Depression Mm -hmm. that he lived through. It forever changed the way he was with uh, money or anything of value, and it just made him way more cautious and prudent about anything like that. And he goes, right now, there's a lot of people that are getting calls and are finding out that maybe they were over leveraged or... They hadn't saved for a rainy day, um, and they were living a much more lavish lifestyle than they probably should have. And these people, the ones that will answer, um, this potentially will forever change their life and their spending behaviors and the way they think about finances. And some people, it has nothing to do with finance. Somebody could be listening right now, and they are saved for the next six months to a year, and this wasn't that big of a deal financially for them. But then there are now at home with their kids and they're spending more time with their kids than they ever had. And maybe they thought they were spending a lot of time with their kids before until now, and maybe they're getting a a new connection to them. And maybe their phone call Mm. is spending more time with the ones that you love. And he said the same thing about with your spouse and, and, and really being home with them. He says, so, you know, a lot of us are getting phone calls right now and, you know, some of us will pick up and this will forever change behaviors and, some of us may find ourselves in this situation another decade. I like, I like that message because I, when you're communicating uh, hard truths, which the three of us are very experienced doing, not in finance, uh, money, economics, but in, in fitness, we are very, very experienced at communicating hard truths to people. Now, one of the things you learn uh, when you work with people long enough is you learn how to communicate hard truths in ways that are effective. So I could easily tell somebody, you know, who's 60 pounds overweight, well, it's because you eat like crap and you don't move. And if you don't change, that ain't going to happen. It's true. Terrible way of communicating it. It's not effective. I'm not going to get the person to understand how to make those changes. It seems too daunting. It actually makes them feel terrible and it ends up pushing them in the opposite direction. And so what you end up learning over time is how do I communicate the hard truth? Because here's the reality. If you want to change your body composition, if you want to improve your health, there is no shortcuts. And the truth is it takes hard lifestyle changes. You cannot continue to live the way you've been living and expect to have better health. It's just can't do that. And it's more complicated than that, but that's what we try to do on the show. So what Peter Schiff says on the podcast is hard truths. Mm -hmm. He's telling the truth, but the problem is a lot of us don't want to hear it because I don't want to hear that it's going to get hard. It's going to get worse. And I don't want to hear that maybe the way I've been living is part of the reason why it's getting so hard. Because he made a really good point. And think about this. This is true now. How come so many companies and so many people are so screwed after not working for just two months? Think about that. For We're just talking two months here. It's because they were living so close to their... They, they were pushing the limits so much on their lifestyle... They didn't save. They might have credit card debt. They spent money on, you know, uh, streaming services and video game consoles. And maybe I buy cigarettes or maybe I buy eat out here and there. And over time, what that means is I am totally screwed if I don't work for two months. For two months, I am done. I'm out. And a lot of companies, a lot of big companies, not just people, by the way, a lot of big companies ran this way. And so what Peter Schiff is doing is he's telling the truth about. You know, because w- w- the decision was th- that was made by the by the uh, infectious disease experts, which who are experts at this. They said, "Look, if it's better if we if we stay at home, shut things down, isolate ourselves for a little while, but th- that comes with consequences. You don't have people who are working, you don't have companies producing products, people aren't making money, so you can't just do that and not have a consequence. Just like." The consequences of leading a healthy lifestyle mean you're not going to indulge like you normally do. You well, can't just be yeah. lazy all the time. I think of like liposuction. That's what that is. Like the way we're infusing money is like somebody who is obese going and getting liposuction. Right. You don't you don't fix the root cause no. of how you got to that situation. 
And and what I, what ends up happening to almost every client that you guys have had that have done liposuction or had, you know, gastric bypass. It's never a long term yeah. solution, right? Because because you didn't fix the behaviors. You didn't. Mm -hmm. And so what he's saying in that, and and some people got pissed off listening to that. Like, oh, he's just saying, then people should suffer and businesses should. No, what he's saying is it's inevitable that not that they should that that's just inevitable. Just like if you want long term fitness success. Uh, it's inevitable that you have to follow certain steps. And if you don't, it's inevitable. If you don't stay active, if you eat terribly and don't take care of yourself, you 100% you will suffer from worse health than if you did all the right stuff. And there's nothing that I can do. I can't make magic and change that for you. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what he's talking about. Um, and you know, it leads me to Another point here, and and this is an important one. I and again, I'm none of us are infectious disease experts. I'm going to leave that up to the to the scientists. But I will say this: there are health consequences to what we're also doing right now. So I don't mean forget the economics for a second. But there are there health consequences from not uh, not having your going to work and having that sense of purpose. Is there are there health consequences from not seeing and meeting with people, that physical touch and that that connection that you have that we all took for granted, you know, uh, just not going to work and seeing coworkers. A lot of people are, are starting to feel like, oh man, I miss I just had around the, people. I just had yeah. this debate with my friends that, you know, because everyone goes back and forth on the argument of the, the death rate, the infection rate, yeah. how serious it is. And it's like, okay, no one is talking about uh, the uh, suicide rate going up, yep. depression going up, spousal, spousal abuse going up, child abuse going up alcohol 50 something percent increase so there's a lot of other things that are happening right now right. that uh potentially could be very harmful to our society that we're not addressing or talking about either right so here's yeah. the, here's the mental space that and remember i'm a if you're if you're new to the podcast i'm a hypochondriac okay so i am trust me i i i worry about a lot of stuff like this but i try to put things in perspective and the reality may be this i don't know if this is going to be the reality but this might be the reality we might be in a position where we have to make a choice where they open up the government, the government opens up the country because they realize if we don't have people producing shit, we don't have people working, that's going to kill us more than this potential virus. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean the virus went away though. So we have to go back to regular life and we have to willingly accept the risk. And that means we can't, we, ha we can't let fear destroy us. So you take your precautions, you wash your hands, you you know, someone's sick, stay at home. If you've been around someone sick, stay at home. If you're at high risk, you probably should take more precautions. But we're going to have to just like every day when I get in the car and I drive. Yeah. I take the I willingly take the risk that I may die in a car accident, which if you add up your entire lifetime of driving, that's actually a, a decent risk, right? But we take that risk because we have to, you know, live our lives. So we might have to be in that situation mm -hmm. soon. This is where I'm know? actually a little bit uh, on the optimistic side in terms of like us being uh, quarantined and, and really like having to evaluate what your true values are and, and what, uh, you know, what that looks like going forward and the precautions that you're going to take, uh, you know, where you probably wouldn't even have considered them before and like uh, how you're going to wash your hands and, and, you know, still making contact. But there's going to be different behaviors that are going to result out of this going sure. forward. Uh, but also just like in terms of your own life using this time, this is a hard stop. Everybody had forced, you know, it was forced to stop, which, you know, either you could use it to your advantage, like you were bringing up earlier, or you could not receive the call. And I think this is one of those things you really like need to do a lot of soul searching, mm -hmm. deep dives with, you know, what the, the landscape looks like for you individually going forward. What, you know, what does the work look like? What does the family schedule look like? You know? All these things that are super value valuable to you, you know, really put those in the forefront. Yeah, and I'll tell you, how, I'll tell you, I'll give you an example of how how they went too far. Like there was, a, I don't know where this was, but there was, um, uh, you know, Easter, right? We just had Easter, and uh, first time uh, I think in modern history where Easter wasn't celebrated with people together, or whatever. Everybody had to stay home. Mm -hmm. um, but there were some church services where people drove their cars yeah. to a parking lot. Kept their windows rolled up. Everybody stayed in the car. Nobody got out of the car. Everybody's in their car. And there were literally, there were little, I don't know what where this was, but there were I think it was in Texas. There were police and government officials walking around these parking lots with people staying in their cars, meeting yeah, for handing out citations and taking down license plates so they could give people tickets. 
You went too far. What? You yeah. went too far. That didn't happen. Yes, it did. Yes. Really? Yes, it did. Yeah, there's stuff like that that makes me pretty concerned. That makes me really upset because part of people's health is, it, it, for some people, is having these services. They stayed in their cars. Why are you writing citations? Mm -hmm. Why are you giving people tickets for for shit like that? You piece of shit. If that, mm -hmm. and that's a terrible. Like I, I get if they got out of the car and they're all hanging out, whatever. Totally different. But they were in their cars. Well, they I, with tickets. Now I wonder if I, I haven't. I didn't even think about this. Right, like. Because don't, uh, I mean, CHPs and just your your uh, law enforcement, don't they have quotas that they have to hit for tickets? And if sure. nobody is on the road and- They're uh, going to be more aggressive, which is kind of what I'm experiencing. Like I'm driving around, like I just, I I'm I can see a lot of people getting pulled over. I don't know how often this has happened or if it's just coincidental that I'm like seeing this quite more frequently, but it's like anything else, right? You need money like coming in. I would yeah. assume that they would probably be a little more aggressive right now. Yeah, there was some dude who went on his boat and he got a- that they the nat they they pulled him in and g impounded his boat and gave him a ticket. He was by himself. Yeah, yeah. That's what? pretty isolated. You can't get more self isolated yeah, than on a boat dude. in the yeah. ocean. You're gonna sneeze on a fish. It's yeah. got to be yeah. that then, though, right? It's got to be that they're they're trying to make quotas and so they're they're doing things like that, right? I, yeah, and and and, when, and fear is a really bad motivator when people are scared. You know? Yeah, dude. Then they start to do stupid things. I think we need to be smart, and it's good. Look, it's coming soon. We're going to be told to go back to work. I think it's important that we don't let our fear. We're still going to be smart, but don't let our fear, you know, crush us and realize that there are other aspects to health. Avoiding getting sick is one of them. Mm -hmm. The other one is we need to be around each other. We need to work. We have to have a sense of purpose. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to see people's well, health start to decline just from that. You already are, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting. Did you guys uh, get a chance to check out like SNL? They, uh, I think, I guess Saturday night they uh, released with Tom Hanks being the host and they did it all remotely. So it was like all on zoom. And, uh, so he, he presented as like the host and did his whole thing, but there's no audience. So it was just like dead air and there like, there's no energy. And then, and then the skits were all one-on-one -on -one kind of skits. So it's like, you know, you, I guess they had like a responsibility to do a skit within their house and then kind of try and make it funny. Oh, and wow. then they had one where they were like, all like zooming in together and they tried to like collaborate on a skit. And it was just like, I was really hoping for them. Like, oh, this is a great idea, you know, kind of showing that, you know, we can still keep going on with this, but it was like, it was painful, dude. It was tough to watch. You know that the, the back in the day they used to have laugh tracks yeah. where they would have like fake oh, laugh. They, they needed that. It makes yeah. a huge difference. Yeah. yeah. You ever watch it? Like watch an old sitcom. Yeah, old like, sitcom has yeah, a, like, yeah, yeah, like Three's Company. Take yeah. out the laughing. Oh. Like, <laughs> 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 Dude, it's crickets, yeah. you know? And I was just like, I felt bad because like, you know, they've had, they've had hits and misses quite a bit, but this was just like one of those where if you don't have audience re responding like that was a major part of the show yeah. that just got eliminated did you got what did you now did you guys use zoom for easter i did yeah you did I yeah did we did a, we did a family uh zoom church session so it's tradition uh for us my wherever all my siblings are at we come back into town and uh my mom's like one mom request is like can we all go to service together mm -hmm. every and that's her thing right so uh, she sent out a thing earlier in the week that, okay, we could stream it. And it was cool. I mean, a lot of churches are doing this right now, right? So a lot of churches are doing the streaming service. They, a lot of them were doing it before, so it wasn't that big of a hard transition for them. And that's what we did. We just pulled up. So I had the iPad up with all of my my family, so all my siblings and my mom and uh, her husband. And we're and then we're watching on the television. We're watching the actual service. So we're all watching the same service. Oh, that's and great. And then we're all Zoomed together. And so... Mm -hmm. And we did that. That for, was really nice. Yeah, yeah, it was. We did it with my family. Uh, the One of the drawbacks is I have such a, well, I mean, it's not a drawback. I love this about my family, but it's huge, right? So uh, we're on Zoom with 30 or 40 people. Wow. And it's That's this, a party. yeah. And then there's other people who, who don't understand how to get on and use like my grandparents or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then like my aunt will like FaceTime my grandma and put her uh, on the camera. Classic. <laughs> yeah. So we all saw each other that way. And then. Jessica's family did something really cool. Her friend Jessa um, and her friend's mom made uh, Easter dinner, and then what they did is they she drove by and kind of dropped off food at people's houses. Mm -hmm. Then all of us went on Zoom and ate together. Yeah. So we pulled the we pulled up the screen. Oh, that's and cool. everybody's eating together and having mm -hmm. conversation. 
It was really nice. So we did this with so could, uh, so being in service as my mom and our family's tradition, and then Katrina's family every Easter we've been together with their family, and it's normally like yours. She's got a very big family, and we get together, and it's food and drink and yeah. and, and music and having a good time. Uh, and what we did, so uh, Joey, my brother-in-law, like he's a, a musician and plays the guitar normally always for us when we're there. So he actually came on while everybody was kind of cooking in their kitchens and preparing for Easter dinner. He came on Zoom and we, like you guys, we had like 30 people all mm. on there, all of her family and stuff. And he's playing music for oh. everybody. So that was, you know, what it did make me think about, and you know, this is a, a, cool that you brought this up because... You know, and again, thinking back to the Dave Ramsey thing of, uh, you know, answering the call and like, what is my message be behind all of this that we're going through and stuff? And I think, you know, uh, I definitely don't see my family as much as I'd like to. We're all in different places, right? Mm -hmm. So we all live in different cities within a, a few hours of each other. So occasionally for these holidays and stuff, we got to, we get together. But it just made me think like, you know what, of course, uh, getting together in person, it would never replace that. But this is something that could potentially complement my family that we weren't doing before. Like, totally. Instead of us waiting every three months to get together for a holiday and uh, and all finally see each other, what if once a month we at least did a family Zoom where we all get together and like have a glass of wine or have a dinner and like interact? So there's some things that I have a feeling that I, I can't be the only one that is noticing yeah. stuff like that that may change. That may behavior. stick. Yeah. Yeah, that may stick around. I think you know back to investment. I think Zoom is a great investment because of it. I think that it's you're, you're going to see it stick after this is done in, uh, in many ways. I think that's one. Yeah, of them. even like I mean that's a really big deal for my mom for us to come to church with her. And, you know, she she feels like she gets it once or twice a year mm -hmm. now. I mean, that's something we give to my mom now once a month, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, that would just, oh, my God, it would just totally make her day. Like, if just, uh, you should have seen how excited she was just having all her kids on the screen oh. and our grandbabies, right? So I'm holding Max and my sister's got her three kids. That's and great. So she's, like, looking at all our kids while she's watching church. And, you know, so, you know, that's, these are things that could, we could do for our mother that, takes an hour out of our Sunday once a month and would probably just make her over the world to be able to do that. And so, so I, valuable. You right. can sense the value. Right, right. And of course, it doesn't, again, it doesn't replace human contact and, and being together. I think that we'll, we're, what we're all learning is how much we value mm -hmm. and probably appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But some things that, you know, hey, maybe we're going to start to do some more stuff like this in the future, I think. Now, now, I so I, we also watched a, a streaming uh, service and, um, God, the the... the, the the pastor, such a good speaker. And he said something I thought was so powerful. He goes, you know, in many ways, he goes, this Easter is much more like the first one, much more than any other mm -hmm. Easter. He said, yeah. a lot of uncertainty, a lot of fear, people feeling isolated. And when he said that, I was like, wow, that is really yeah. powerful. I heard like the same message. Except the guy that, <laughs> the guy that. that, that <laughs> I'm sure that, he wasn't original. <laughs> yeah. He's like, um, he's good, but he's also like, radio DJ guy. You know? yeah. So it's hard for me to like <laughs> take that out of it. He's like, yeah. <laughs> you Dude. Know? Like, I mean, it's, he does a good job, but like, it's, it's funny. So one of my, one of my goals this year, you know, cause every year, maybe not at the beginning of the year, it's not necessarily a resolution, but you know, every once in a while I'll make a goal for myself on something I want to improve. And one thing that I said to myself last year is I want to get a lot better at public uh, speaking. I want to get really, really good at public speaking. I had no idea that, that, pastors and people who speak at church the best speakers well, mm -hmm. but the best speakers you'll ever hear well think about it first yeah. think about it first they second. practice every they week. go to school for yeah. not only not only that their their ability to survive financially depends on that too. Yeah, yeah i mean yeah. The, well that's what the, i mean they're, they're, the, they, yeah, they're the, practiced for years right, and years right and years. the community the, com the community they rely on their community to tithe in order for the church to 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 be able to yep. to be able to survive so and you being able to obviously draw more people in that do that you got to be one hell of a speaker or else you're not around well, i mean but, the, he, but and right and then the other part yeah. is this is like you know there's some great famous public speakers out there that you could listen to and watch they also make money off of their motivational speaking and all that stuff but they're well known many of these pastors i've never heard of but they're exceptionally well and i think a big part of it is they literally are speaking in front of a group of people several times Constantly. a week for decades. Yeah, of course you're going to be amazing. 100. percent Yeah, every time I hear one, there's some and what that are other school like challenges you. Like seminary school always puts you up in front of uh, people to speak. You know, that's like the that's what you're being educated on. Oh wow. So yeah. yeah. Hey, did you guys hear about the new Guinness Book of World Record that was just set for uh, for working out? 
What? No. Yeah, there's a new one for, I'm going to pull it up just so I know I don't, I don't screw it up. So this guy broke the Guinness Book of World Records for bench pressing underwater. I didn't even know this existed. <laughs> I, I, I know uh, Juji has done that before. I've seen him. I've seen him uh, bench pressing underneath. The- so here's the here's the record. Okay, bench pressing. Under- Greg Whitstock from the United States bench pressed with a 50 kilogram barbell. So what is that? 120 pounds, 62 times underwater. So it's the record for how many reps you could do underwater. You've got to send that over to Juji. Leave it to him to try and beat something 62 like that. 62 times. Yeah. So it's not a strength feat. It's, it's holding no, your breath. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, a holding your endurance. breath feat. Yeah. Which, to be honest with you, 62 is not that crazy. I mean, you, you could probably get 62 done in, what, two and a half minutes maybe? Well, bro, it's underwater though. So well, you think hold- about the oxygen, right. your, the, your blood oxygen going down so quickly. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And you're just. I mean, it made a record, so it's not like not impressive. It's impressive. Of- but I think that I could see somebody, I mean, how many people have tried to beat that? Yeah. That's that's what's that's comical <laughs> yeah. about the Guinness World Record. You remember? Did you ever watch? Did you guys watch? Uh, silly. Did you guys watch Robin Big when you were growing? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I watched on and off. I love Robin. I've seen yeah. every episode. Like I, I love Robin Big. And one of the episodes, yeah, that was his mission. Was to like, yeah, well, they, he looks up. He's like, I wonder how many skateboard Guinness World Rec- Records there are. You know, how many kick flips in a day? Yeah. And he went. I think they crushed like yeah, 20. all those the biggest skateboard. Yeah, and, like, yeah, driving it through like yeah. downtown LA. Yeah, yeah, they did. They they went and they like listed all the ones that they okay I know we could beat this 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 and this and he I think he got he owns like 20 something Guinness World Records you know that was now. one of my favorite yeah. books as a kid I what? got it every single year from 19 I want to say 85 until like I was like maybe 1993 I would get every year Guinness Book of World I loved reading the Guinness Book of World Records <laughs> and there was one there was one in particular that might still stand today and it's I, I guarantee you if I say it you guys will know what I'm talking about it's the it's the world's uh, heaviest twins. Yeah, you know what I'm talking you about. Brought them up a few times. Yeah, they're on the motorcycle. Yeah, yeah, the two yeah. best. You know what I, I think about immediately is the guy that had the longest nails. Oh, oh I remember that. Really, it like curls all the way under, like the spiral. Disgusting. Why is that? Why do we have a few of those those records that are just it, it ingrained in our brains? Dude, I remember that was just so nasty. It was. I remember. How do you that wipe one. your ass with that? Yeah. What do you do? Like yeah. you're just like carrying someone this takes ball care of, you? of of nails you everywhere know, you go. There are spiritual people in in India that are known for a lot of this kind of stuff. Like there's one man in India, he's considered a spiritual guru and he's known for apparently, you know, his, uh, what he believes in his God uh, told him to raise his arm and never put it down. So oh yeah, he holds his arm and it's like all atrophied and weird because he's been holding his arm up for, I don't know how many decades (laughs) or whatever. I got a question, somebody. (laughs) (laughs) I'll tell you guys. answer this guy. I'll I'll tell you something something (laughs) weird that is going on right now during this whole, uh, you know, COVID-19, all of us being at shelter in place. So you know what's happening here in the Bay Area that's tripping me out uh, is because everybody is indoors so much. The wildlife is coming down into the city. Oh, oh yeah. wow! Yeah. 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 So my my mother in law sent New me York o- too. Sent me over this, uh, you know, uh, pictures of mountain lion footprints. Oh hell no! And a picture of it on uh, from their her neighbor's um, cam. You know, mm-hmm. uh, whatever security yeah, cam. Yeah. Of it walking in the backyard, putting its paws up on the window seal, looking into the the wow. living room and stuff. It's a yeah. mountain lion. They've never had a mountain. This is like down the city right here, right where I used to live. Mm-hmm. She sends me a video the very next day after sending me that one of just like a whole family of wild pigs, like fifteen of them running down our old neighborhood. Well, the would, noise has gone down. The you know at night the 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 light um, you know has gone down in terms of light pollution. Like so, they're getting all the signals that yeah. this is like okay to come. Okay, yeah, yeah. You're not hearing cars driving around like crazy like you normally would, and people being out and loud and lights like car lights and everything like that. So it's all it's just they're all kind of creeping in. I right wonder now. if we're gonna see Bigfoot. Stupid, oh, dude. Yeah. What if all the He's ant- interdimensional, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Squatch? Yeah. You don't think Squatch lives in this dimension? No. I think. I, what if the animals are like, yeah, the animals are probably like, what the fuck's going on? No. Are for, we taking it back? No. I know, right? For is, sure. is it our time? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Have you guys ever seen a mountain lion in real life? Yeah. Like, not, not in a zoo, but like no, in real yeah. life? I yeah, told yeah. you guys, we had one like like walking down our neighborhood one time and they caught it on camera and everything and it was it was, it was was creepy. Yeah. Isn't it? Isn't really that, creepy. Isn't that because we're in California, right? Right, so you get the foothills right. I remember one time I was on a trail and I was walking and I go around the corner and there's a mountain lion sitting on the side right there. And I remember thinking like that could kill me so easy. 
right yeah, now. Yeah. Slowly back up, you know, <laughs> and it was all good. But I can't yeah, believe that so they live tall. that they live right there. Yeah, it's crazy. Hey, huh? we we brought up on the show the other day. Um, you know, I think Justin made a funny meme about the fans only or only fans pages. Oh, oh the ones right, that are popping right. up right now. So we've been like joking about it, kind of talking about it, and like you know we've noticed what, dude. So I so love. Is it true or what? It so is. We have a discount code yes. now. Not only is it true, seventy six percent increase no. in traffic. Whoa, Seven, that's how true it is. That's amazing. I, I, I knew thought, it. I thought it was so. Cr- I read the article this morning. I thought, oh, this is so that's great high. because we've been talking about this for a while now. Not only that, but what's making its way right now are virtual strip clubs. Yeah. So don't and, they just call that porn? Well, yeah. <laughs> no. What they do? I don't understand. No, it's set up different. It's set up to where like they're you can dancing. Give tips and stuff? Yes, you can give tips oh, while wow. she's dancing. Right. So you're watching virtually, and this uh, this stripper just reported this that she did eighteen thousand in one night. Oh my wow. gosh! Look yes. At that. So you, you know what you know what I don't like most about that industry. I'm not gonna lie, the gender pay gap is terrible in that one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Men, yeah, men no. don't make equal any, wages. There ain't no men. dude stripper making eighteen nah. grand on a webcam. <laughs> you know? No, you just get made into a meme like yeah. that. That one guy. Yeah, it's, part, it's partially our fault because yeah. guys are just. Can I have a dick pic? Sure. <laughs> like, what are you doing giving it that away? Yeah. You're, you're crashing the price of it anyway. How are you guys doing with your? Uh, you know, I was talking about that. I'm trying to you know get my. My, my body fat down because it's a little high. One thing I haven't, I, I've definitely neglected is uh, my vegetable intake because I'm making far less trips to the grocery store because yeah. well, they're, they're it's out. a bit of an- They're out a lot. Oh, yeah. We it, just went yesterday. It's been it, tough, yeah. yeah. Really? You saw it being sold out too? Oh, yeah. Just, we were just, so, okay. Now so, you're talking about frozen or fresh? Fresh. Oh. So we went We went to go get, uh, so we we normally go to our little, we have this little, I don't even want to share it on the podcast because then I want everyone to know. I know yeah, what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. yeah. Don't bring We it have up. this nice little grocery store, I'm not going to say where, that actually has almost felt like nothing's happened. It mm-hmm. blows my mind. It's in this little nice, rich pocket neighborhood I'll give you that much and uh, you know when we go over to it it's always got everything stocked yeah it's a good experience so they they were closed for Easter so it forced Katrina and I to go over to Safeway and when we go in there all the freaking fresh greens are gone I'm like mm-hmm. fuck dude it's still bad this way so yeah, no. We, <laughs> Safeway's I, like post the. I should. I guess I should have for our, yeah. our our partners. It probably would, they probably would have appreciated. It, but I just for, I took a picture of what we made last night, and we had very minimal greens on there. So we always like. I mean, Katrina and I will pound uh, a green juice, the Organifi, like right afterwards or right before. Yeah. Whenever we have days, I've like never that. had so it's much the of it. Savior. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I've definitely had more of it. I'm now having it, dude. I'm having it once or twice a day because of exactly what you said. And, and the other, the reason why I'm not getting a lot of vegetables. Because I don't like the the grocery store experience right now. You go in there, you separated. It's all anxious with the masks and everything. Then you come home. We got to wipe everything down. It takes forever. It's like I go yeah, you once a do week it as less as possible. Yeah, and yeah. fresh vegetables. You know, you can't go buy a shit ton of them once a week because they'll or go bad. Or you can, and you'll be like me, where like we we signed up for this, uh, you know, th- this whole thing where you get like a box uh, f- straight from the farm, and so like we we did that, and so we're still getting that, but now they're giving a stock of of you know all these like uh, like arugula or like uh, like real random stuff like celery like this huge thing is celery. I'm like, what am I going to do with this? This isn't like regular like carrots and, you know, lettuce and all that, like like kale. This is like all these like random oh, like, so sprouts and stuff. Now, is that what happens with those? Because I haven't done, we, could you, you know, you can't pick. They just give it to yeah, you. Just, give, they give you these huge bushels of these things and you're like, I could use like maybe some dishes, but you're like, this is weird. Like I'm not mm-hmm. using all these leeks for uh, everything other than soup. Bro, oh, celery, you just, just cover it in peanut butter. What are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. the best thing in the world. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like, dude, you know, zero nutrients speaking of our partners we've been sharing like all of our partners that have been doing really cool stuff and here's another one uh mir is doing this so they had they had uh got this uh, famous tattoo artist to draw like this really cool image on uh on their mirror cups and then they're selling those and then five dollars for every cup that they sell is going to your your covid re- covid relief wow yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. so i think that man i i feel like i'm trying that's to good. we've gone through most of our partners and most everybody is doing something really cool to give something back cool. it makes me feel really good so about it so hold on Doug, yeah, scroll it's down it's a cool design too it's like this uh like octopus holding these people up from different so the whole thing behind it is basically like we're all uh, like sort of like riding this tide together or whatever yeah so it's okay so the Artist is uh, Kyler Martz, and that's the one that they created the the, the artwork that you're talking about. And then because Doug just pulled it up, so five dollars of every alone together camp cup 
gets donated to Feeding America's uh, COVID-19 response fund. That's so good. Yeah. Wow. See, I, I, I like seeing that yeah, right now. champion stuff. Yeah, it makes me feel really good to see that, you know, what people are doing or whatever. I can't wait to find out our antibody test. We're not going to find out till tomorrow, right? Probably are tomorrow. you guys just like, oh, man, I'm just totally anticipating So yeah. since we brought it up on the show, I've been getting DMs same here. like crazy. Yeah, same and here. I shared my uh, my best friend who had the, uh, the baby who was having seizures. Mm -hmm. I had two people that had the exact same scenario as, as that, went in, got tested, actually uh, uh, found out that this was back in mid-January, got tested They for flu. They said it wasn't the flu. They couldn't figure out for sure what it was, thought maybe it was an ear infection or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, her and her husband both just recently tested for COVID-19, and they both have the antibodies. Oh, wow. Yep. Interesting. Wow. Yep. Very yep. interesting. Where did they test? So, uh, I didn't ask where they tested at. I just, she, just, she just shared that information. I just had a lot of people that you said that, hey, you know, I heard you talking about that you think you might have. Yeah. And I shared the symptoms and everything. This is, and they, and it, and it, it seems that it's about everybody around the same time, January or February. There was quite a few people here that have that that thought they had it based off the symptoms. Well, see what I so the messages I've gotten are people who say that and also went to the to the doctor and got tested for the flu and they weren't and came they weren't. back. Yes. Yeah, so they have all the I was flu like symptoms. Like my youngest in December, yeah, he had real bad flu symptoms. Did they test him? Yeah, yeah, and he didn't have any any uh, flu. So what did they think it was? Just a, oh, yeah, I know. Saw, yeah, just a real bad. Uh, Cold, I guess. I, I hate that answer. Yeah. You go to the doctor. Not that not that it's their fault, but you know, when you got something, they're like, oh, it's probably just a virus. Yeah, yeah it's just a <laughs> yeah. virus. Yeah, like I feel like that's just random a, virus. It's just an answer. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Why is my leg falling off? So you were in the in the newspaper too. I don't think we've told on the podcast, which like a lot of people are like, Oh my god, like yeah. Adam, you're in the newspaper. You know what's so funny about that? <laughs> that's just, that's how old we are. I know. Yeah. That's Katrina and I were talking about this because I did. I got all kinds of phone calls from people and text messages. And the irony of that is that you know, uh, San Jose Spotlight newspaper or whatever like that is smaller than Mind Pump Media. So, <laughs> but it's a newspaper a it, because it, that just shows you how we're still kind of stuck in those ways, right? Because it was in yeah. the newspaper. So, like my family, like, oh my god, you were in the newspaper. I'm, I'm like, put this in my refrigerator. Like, are you fucking kidding me right yeah. now? Like, <laughs> like, literally, Mind Pump is like f probably five x that newspaper is. You know what I'm saying? As far as the reach that they, <laughs> they yeah. Have. But because it hit people's feeds on Facebook and shit like that, and it popped up, people were tripping out, bro. It's totally. That's true so for thing. example let's say your your face was was on some someone on instagram or, or whatever twitter with like a million followers posted a picture of you versus a billboard that like you know hundreds of people thousands of people drive by every day yeah uh, your, yeah. if your family drove by a billboard oh my god he made yeah, it look yeah. at this. because it used to mean something yeah, i know you know totally it, it different. is funny Isn't but funny? Yeah. i was just happening she was in there when I went in to get my antibody testing, and she just wanted to chat and talk about uh, what I thought. And, you know, I seen uh, the thing that I was sharing with her, too, is just it's unfortunate that uh, some people are going to have the attitude of this is like, you know, uh, taking advantage of COVID-19. And I just what? I did, that type of stuff irritates me. What? Yeah. If you look at yeah. even look Come at uh, why because you paid for a test. Yeah, and I almost, and I stayed like out of this. Somebody twisted your arm. Yeah, you know? I didn't pick the brick up. I know that you know when I saw, uh, I looked at like uh, when Red Dot posted. They posted that the the newspaper article. They posted something else that I'd done, and you know underneath it, you know people were like, just so people know, you know they're offering this for free here, here, and stuff like that. I'm like, you know what? What what is your what is that person's desired outcome to come onto Red Dot's page and do that? And I didn't. I want. I was going to engage because it just. Right. It really irritates me when people do shit like that, and it's it's unfortunate. And I, I don't know. I feel like I want <laughs> I want to be someone from the the other side to like. We need to get away from this like in fucking entitlement thing that we just we all should have everything for free. Like we're th this th it's it's heading us down the path of where a lot of people are at right now, where mm. we expect that we're supposed to have all these it just can't services. World. No, it's just that's it's why the whole Peter Schiff thing is so hard for people to digest because it's like money just doesn't fucking come from nowhere. Right. Yeah, there's there you know it has to be backed by something. Well, and the reality is this: is that there are going to be uh, free COVID tests or paid for by your insurance, but the problem is going to be access to them. You're probably going to need uh, you, you access because people will be lining up like crazy, so you might not be able to get one. And the way they may ration them is by saying you need a prescription from a doctor versus a company who sells them 
and maybe you don't have a doctor's prescription. Maybe, you know, it doesn't matter. I'll pay anyway. Right. By the way, that money that you pay, that company profits with that money, all it's going to do is help them create more of these tests. And it doesn't take away from no. free tests. It only complements. It's adding more to the market. So it's not a bad thing. It's actually- It doesn't, yeah, overwhelm the places that are doing it for free, right? You and, get more options yeah. that and, and here's the deal. If you're someone who doesn't spend and doesn't do it, then who cares? Yeah, don't, yeah, yeah don't. exactly. Right. Well, well, like, why do you have an opinion about Exactly. It? If yeah. you're not going to do- because there's trust me, I'll tell you right now, it's filled the fuck up. You yep. know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of people just like me who are like, "Hey, I, I really want to know. I have I, nowhere else to get yeah. this test." Yes, because yeah. we, well, you get put on the back burner right now. If you're somebody who thought they had it a month or two months ago, if you're not currently sick right now and you want to go get an antibody no one's giving you that for free. No. Yeah. Nobody is. You no. have to get in the back of the line because they're trying to treat people right now that That's are right. in the in the middle of it, which which understandably so you should yeah, yeah it should be that way. And I I agree with that. I'm not saying I should cut in the front of the line, but but if I if I could pay two hundred and fifty dollars to someone who's providing a service out there, mm. so I can come get it done right away, mm. absolutely, I'm going to. Right, right. I right. want to talk to you guys about Top Gun. <laughs> okay, have you guys seen the trailer for like the Maverick, yes. the new one? Looks like, badass. Yeah, like so they've been delaying it a bit and all this, but I guess they're still really trying to push it through to like December twenty third, like right before Christmas. Mm. And so I actually got to see some of the uh, and read a little bit on it, like how they shot some things and everything. So they have like IMAX cameras and everything inside the cockpit, and they're actually taking actors and and they're doing these crazy maneuvers, like super low altitude, uh, and, and with G forces, all the things. Like with the cameras inside with no CGI. So how, for real. How yeah, are they like not like real. puking their guts up? Well, I guess they had to go through all this extensive training. And then, you know, uh, Tom Cruise had, had already like, uh, you know, gone through that. And he was trying to get the other actors uh, to, to do it too and get conditioned because they, yes, they were puking quite a bit in the very beginning, now, uh, trying to get used to it. Now, I would assume too that we probably, has there, has this ever been done? I mean, have they ever no. shot IMAX through from a jet? No, it's revolutionary. I Dude, guess. people oh, awesome. need. Justin, cool. you need to, yep. you need to educate people on just how insanely difficult it is to sit in a in a in a high performing jet and go through. Oh how many God. G's did you hit? Nine point three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know how many. Yeah, because yeah. it was I earned that shit. Yeah. Justin, <laughs> Jason, Justin came back because he got taken up by the uh, what were they called? Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds. The Thunderbirds. Yeah. He yeah. got taken up and. They took him through nine G's, and when he came back, I remember when he left, I turned he, into like a ghost. He was super hyped, and he's yeah, like, "Yeah, yeah. it's gonna be so awesome!" And I'm uh, like, "I don't know." He comes back, <laughs> and I'm like, "So, know, man. I'm like, so what did it feel like?" And he goes, "The words he used was, he goes, it feels like every molecule and atom of my body was taken apart." Yeah. And he goes, and I said, yeah. "Would you do it again?" Yeah, he he goes, scrambled no. my DNA. Yeah, he's like, "No, I would never do that again." <laughs> yeah. Now, when you were doing, obviously, he didn't go from uh, zero to nine G's right no. away. You were you were a little bit faster, a little bit faster. Yeah. Was there was there a uh, uh, was there like a major difference between four and nine or four and six? Like, Fuck yeah. Oh, so each, <laughs> each G you could feel. Oh, hell yeah. Really? Like, well, like four or like two to, I think out of the gates, like we got up to like four or five because like he was going like vertical straight up and then started spinning. <laughs> And I was like, whoa. And like, I, I thought that was going to be like the extent of it. I was like, oh, I can, I can do this. You just kind of bear down and like, it feels like, <laughs> you know, like I, I try to think of like, have you ever seen that, that, that Maxwell commercial where the guy's just getting blown, like his whole face oh, that is old flapping one with the speaker. Yeah. It just yeah. felt like, it just felt like, you know, like a huge, like thousand pound person is just smashing you and like, like all of your body parts at once. And you're like, Bruh! you know, trying to like squeeze yourself to stay in, in one place. And that's four. That's four. And that's or five four. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, you started to do all these maneuvers, and that's where I think that's where most people get like queasy, and you know, because you start spinning and you're trying to like regain your semblance of where you are in terms of space and like where your center of gravity is. All that gets fucked, you know. And so, uh, just going through that, we did a bunch of maneuvers for a while, and then he's just like, "Okay, we're gonna start ramping it up." And then we do like a little test, and it was like I don't know, like six or something, and I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> And because they had these compression pants that if I didn't have those, I for sure would have blacked out. So that's what sends all the blood back up. So yeah, just immediately when we hit the G's, it just squeezes your legs really hard and then it comes back up. But yeah. Does it feel like it's almost cutting the circulation off? Does it feel like that? Yeah. Wow. Like you just, like you have to actively squeeze and tense up like every like fiber of your, of your muscles to be able to keep the blood. Yeah. Just to keep it, you know, pooling back into your, in your dome. So, uh, yeah, I was like those, those hard, it's, it's basically like almost like a 90 degree, you know, hard stop turn 
turn like like and you abruptly turn and go the other direction that's wow. where you get the nine something ten G's. so when you hit nine do you even know what's going on or are you just like i'm surviving yeah it's like you can't see because like your eyes are really blurry and i think the pilots probably are conditioned to where they can still obviously they can still How see it's not that? just feel but um I, I think like i probably would have done better i think there's something about being in the driver's seat you know, like, and you're not like, you know what the fuck you're doing. You're like, like, I would have did better if I was driving. No, but like, I, I would have felt better. You know, like, I would have at least been like, oh, I have a handle on. No, like, no, I could get, because you, you know, you like, it's just like when you are driving, like if you're driving really fast like that, you, you, you shift to the right because you know you're about to throw it to the left. You yeah, know what I'm like saying? Yeah, like you feeling, you're feeling your way into it more. Like I was just like, it was like somebody's just smacking me with a rag doll. Like, yeah. And so these actors are, yeah. are going through. My eyes are tested. popping out and like, yeah. So, and yeah. I guarantee they're puking their guts Yeah, well, out. Top Gun's probably going to crush. There's so many guys our age who grew up watching that movie. As soon as that comes out, it could suck. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I want to watch that. No, I no. feel like it's going to be bad. It, yeah, it looks like they did a good job, too. I'm excited for it. First question is from Dance Kid Dance. How do I fix hip shift? I'm always favoring my right side when I squat. Oh, the good old hip asymmetrical shift. shift huh? Yeah. You know... Um, one of the best ways, just kind of basic, because there's a lot of techniques that I would employ to work on this with someone, and you know, it depends on what's causing the hip shift in a person for me to, to, to determine what exactly I would apply. Mm -hmm. But one general piece of advice I can give on the podcast that I think would help most people is to start doing uh, unilateral work, one-legged or mm -hmm. split stance work. And then the idea is to mimic make sure both sides are mirror images of each other. That's a really big one. So what you want to do is you want to, let's say you do a, a standing lunge, which is a bit unilateral uh, or more so than a squat. Go down with your strong side, film it with your phone from the front and the side, and then try to be exactly the same with the other leg. It's kind of an easier way to, I'd say, more general way to, to address the yeah, differences. Yeah, and also take regressing it down quite a bit and like doing those exercises like bird dog and these things where we're, we're really just focusing where your hips start to rotate and like you're, you're losing that, that bracing uh, tension that you need the evenly distributed mm -hmm. and being able to anti rotate. So, uh, without getting too complicated, really just trying to keep the hips from moving at all and really like having that proper bracing in the core and, and connectivity in the hips to keep everything straight ahead. Uh, there's lots of exercises for that. You can regress to, to kind of stay, uh, in there and, and really work on that. So, Th this is a little bit of a depends question, right? Because yeah. uh, everybody's yeah. going to be a little bit different. But I, I do want to share probably two of the most common things that I, I see when I when I see this in a client. Um, one of those being it's it, it tends to happen a lot when somebody had some sort of an injury on mm -hmm. one side, especially when it's a major one. They they broke an ankle, they tore an ACL, MCL in their knee, they had hip surgery on one side. And then during that time, uh, that side tends to atrophy. The other side tends to uh, overcompensate because you were injured on that side. And then when the rehab happens, a really good person that was rehabbing probably didn't do a good job of making sure that you started to catch everything back mm -hmm. up and were balanced. I see this a lot. Um, and so then what ends up happening is you have a very dominant side and then it's just the body's natural body will naturally go to that more dominant side. Like when you're in a deep squat, so you go down to squat and so let's just say like, uh, so I had knee surgery on my left side. Mm -hmm. So after that, it, when I would go to squat, my right side was much more dominant and stronger. So at the very bottom, I would have this shift to the right. It would, my, my right side that's stronger at the bottom would want to take over and then you would come out of it. So that's, yeah. that's one really, really common area that, and, and one of the best ways to address that is unilateral trading is to go back and do a lot of split stance stuff, one legged stuff and try and catch catch the legs regain up regain stability that's right regain st a lot of stability training that's going to be really good Single. and it could take a while yeah it does take a while mm -hmm. it takes a while to catch that up and you got to be okay with the the dominant side you know maybe getting a little weaker in while you try and catch the uh the weaker side back up and to try and level that out and unilateral training i think is really good for this now the second thing uh and this was really uh, i was way more enlightened by this after i met and started hanging out with dr brink so uh, those that don't know, the MAPS Prime Pro program was written with uh, Dr. Brink, and he was probably uh, a, a very, very crucial to all of our, our our mobility knowledge, our movement. Like He's just a, on another level as a movement specialist and a good, very good friend of ours. And 
he, I'll never, I'll never forget the first time that I was in his office and he had me take off my shoes and he wanted just to watch me walk and squat and move. And I, he broke down the shift and everything going on in my squat at that time, all the way down to my feet. So a lot of people have really weak feet and they tend to pronate and they typically do that one side more than the other. And if there's a breakdown in the foot and the foot, you know, internally rotates or what they call flatten, your foot flattens more on one side, it'll bounce its way all the way up the kinetic chain until it gets to your hips. And what will happen is you shift the opposite direction, right? So that is really common is to look at your feet and, and get barefoot, squat down, and pay attention to see if you notice one side is doing really, really common. And it was something that I just was not trained. We were trained as trainers early on to really kind of watch the hips and the knees more. Never the feet. Never the feet, right? Never. We were never yeah. really watching the feet, which explained a lot of the reason why this was broken down in myself. And boy, once I really started to work on my foot strength, my ankle mobility, and address how I was planted on the ground, it started to take away any sort of shift that I had in my hips. So those, those in my opinion, are the two areas to, to really look at for the majority yeah, of people. And you know what the challenge is with this is that we can get really good at compensating. In fact, you could get so good at compensating- that you don't know. That to the average person, you may look balanced when you squat or lift because because you've gotten so good at this particular pattern. And then what ends up happening is when you try to correct this pattern, you have to back way off on the weight because you're better at lifting weights poorly than you are at lifting weights properly, okay? No different than if you, you always typed with your two index fingers. The first time you go and practice typing the correct way, you're still going to be faster with your two index fingers. You're just better at doing it the wrong way. But over time, we know that the right way – Will get you, will get you better results. You'll be able to type much faster. The truth is uh, the same for the body. The absolute truth, because you are limited by the weakest link in the chain. So mm -hmm. what I mean by that is, if your if your squat has been stuck at you know X amount of weight or so many reps, what might be preventing you from progressing isn't your total genetic potential for strength. Often, actually, more often than not, it's not that. More often than not, what's stopping you is some kind of a mobility issue where your body just stops you from going any stronger or faster because there's something that's weak. This is why mobility is such, or mobility work can be so valuable mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Because you may think, oh, I, I feel balanced, I'm good, but you got all these plateaus. I've been stuck at you know 250 pound squat, I've been stuck at a you know 150 pound bench press or whatever forever. Uh, well, try this. Try working on mobility. Try following a program like Prime Pro. Work on the major areas of your body and spend the next two months making that a priority, two or three months making that a priority. And the good news is you don't need equipment to do this. You could practice this anywhere. You don't need a gym. And then go back to lifting and then with your new mobility, your new connection, start to add weight. And then don't be surprised if your old plateau is shattered because you've now uh, fixed that weak link. And this is, this is something that's extremely, it's far more common than not. Next question is from Sophia Northrup. How should I transition into weightlifting again after an injury? You know what's funny about this question is that uh, people don't realize that the best way to rehab or correct or fix or work on the body with after an injury is resistance training. Yeah, is weight training. Yeah, if you go to – and here's <clears throat> there's a couple reasons why it's the best. There is no form of, of rehab or strengthening or correcting imbalances that even comes close to resistance training. One of the main reasons why it's in a league of its own is because resistance training is formless in many different ways. There's, I can change my form technique and I can mold the exercise around my body. <clears throat> Um, it's that's what is unique to resistance training. You go to a physical therapist, and almost most of the things that they'll do with you to fix your your problems or rehab you revolve around resistance training. Now, sometimes that means weight that you're actually lifting a dumbbell. Sometimes it's a resistance band. Other times it's just intrinsic tension in your body, isometrics. But all of it is considered resistance training. So it is by far, and it, it's the one that's used by professionals, the best way to work. Uh, or correct injuries. Now, how do you get into resistance training uh, after an injury? Number one, very slowly. Number two, special emphasis is and prioritized 
uh, is mobility work. That's what you need to focus on, correctional exercise and mobility work, and that'll get you not just to the point where you feel better after an injury, but get you to the point where you're now better off than you were before because that's probably why you got injured in the first place. I want to I want to add to that, um, and I have a story to share because I'm, I'm really passionate about this topic because – when I had um, my knee surgery, this was not my first uh, injury that I had had, but it was my first injury I had after I had already like almost a decade of, of personal training under my belt. And I was far more educated than what I was in, with previous injuries. And I'll never forget uh, after, the, after I'd recovered from the knee surgery, uh, signing up for my rehab and going there. And I go to this rehab center and, uh, you know, I, I meet the, the physical therapist. And then uh, after that, he hands me off to uh, the lady who was kind of overseeing the area, which was a PT, right? So they typically have most therapies are like this. You have a physical therapy office, which is that's the main doctor where it's held under. Then they have a bunch of PT, PTAs, uh, physical therapist assistants that work underneath them that are helping all the patients. And they try and bust as many people as they can through that. And so they'll have a facility uh, like this one that I went through where there's about 10 of us that are all rehabbing. Someone's rehabbing an ankle, someone's rehabbing a knee, a hip. There's all different ages. We're all in there together. And then there's a PTA who's kind of overseeing everybody. And I'll, I'll never forget, uh, you know, I was doing, she came over to teach me, you know, I was doing like these little stations and she came over to have me do these uh, wall squ ball squats where she put the wall behind my back and then I was squatting up and down and she wanted me to do that for like two minutes and she, you know, just take your time if you need to in between and rest. But for two minutes you do this and she went to the other patient, had him do stuff. And, uh, she basically showed me and then, yeah, I get it. I'm a trainer. She walked away. And what I remember, you know, the first time squatting down again after the injury was holy shit. You know, I was like shaking like a leaf. And when I would get down towards the bottom, you know, the natural thing that my body wanted to do was again, like we were just talking about is the, the, the dominant side that was an injury would take over out of the squat, mm -hmm. you know, and I would shift over to the right really hard and then it would shoot me out of the squat. Now I know as a trainer that mechanically the, the, what I'm trying to do when I'm rehabbing right there is to be very meticulous about my form and not allow the body to just take the easiest path. And so I, I, that got me really, I ended up quitting the, the, the rehab because this happened two or three times in a row. And I'm like, why the fuck am I doing this? If I'm doing the real training, the hard part is the form and the technique while you're rehabbing. Because if you just go through the movements and you don't think about what you're trying to accomplish, you just solidify bad patterns. And this mm -hmm. happens to so many Americans that come out of our surgeries and our rehab is they just, you know, they get them working, you know, the, they get them working again and able to go back to their daily life and walking, but they didn't really fix the overcompensation that naturally yes. happens in all of us. Yeah. So your attention to detail and form is more important than it ever has been when you are rehabbing an injury. So, you know, when you do go back to weights, it's a it go start with very lightweight and and put all of your energy and emphasis on on mirroring the other side or being symmetrical when you move and really focus on the mechanics and trying to perfect your form. That is far more important than seeing, hey, last week I did five pounds. Now this week I'm doing 10 pounds. I'm getting better. No, no, no. Pay attention to the movement and the, and the detail that otherwise you're setting yourself up for a headache long term. Next question is from Kathleen Jurgen Simbaleo. Is there any truth that an imbalance in your microbiome can be directly linked to anxiety and depression? Yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's two reasons why uh, this is true. And by the way, this has been now, um, studies are showing that there is a connection between the, our microbiome. And microbiome represents all of the bacteria and, and fungi and all the different uh, you know, cells in our body that are not human cells that also that live symbiotically, uh, usually symbiotically with us. So you have a microbiome that's in your gut. There's a microbiome that's on your skin, uh, on your eyes, your genitals, uh, your feet. You know, there's that. In, in, in fact, if you were to count all of the cells uh, that are human cells and, and compare them to the cells that are in and on your body that are not human cells, uh, they would actually outnumber human cells. So, so we we. We uh, evolved with them. They are definitely a part of our of who we are. So, there's two reasons why a microbiome, you know, what they might call dysbiosis, or you know, it's off. Let's say, could cause you to feel anxious or depressed. Number one, this is a very obvious one. 
you don't feel good, okay? So how imagine if you were chronically bloated after eating meals, which happens to a lot of people, or you you're constantly battling constipation or diarrhea or heartburn, you know, really bad acid reflux. That's obvious. If you have any kind of a chronic health problem, um, you're it's probably you're you're more likely to feel anxious and depressed just because you don't feel good. Okay, that's a, that's a very easy one. But there's also a, a, a much more direct link. Um, your gut, for example, uh, produces uh, quite a bit of the feel good uh, chemicals in your body, like serotonin. In fact, there's there's all there's the, the second part of your body that has the most serotonin receptors. Receptors are where the serotonin chemical attaches to is in your gut. The first place is your brain. Second place uh, is in your gut. I think the third place is in your heart, which is kind of interesting, right? We've mm-hmm. for, for thousands of years, we've talked about listening to our, our minds, our, our guts, and our hearts, which is kind of interesting. And remember, serotonin is that kind of love, feel good uh, chemical, but there's other ones that are produced quite a bit uh, by this microbiome. So if it's off, you're probably going to have less uh, potentially of these these kind of feel good hormones. Your microbiome also uh, is connected to your overall inflammation in your body. Well, systemic inflammation we know is connected to uh, depression and anxiety. When you're just inflamed overall, they find that you, you tend to have those uh, you know those types of problems. So it's it's definitely directly connected to those things. It's more of a physical, and then there's this this kind of this feedback loop that happens. So oh, I have. Let's say I suffer from digestive issues. That makes me feel bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, the microbiome is off, which also you know, directly makes me feel bad. But now I start to feel bad about feeling bad. Now I start to feel bad about why the, why the hell am I always bloated? Why am I always feeling this way? Now I feel bad about feeling bad. Yeah. And it kind start of becomes- helpless and it's perpetual. Yeah, and it, kind of, it starts to become this problem. So it's definitely connected. Your gut health is a huge part of your overall health. Well, I think that's a, I think you- beautifully uh, broke that down scientifically, but I think there's a really simple way to show this or explain this to someone. I mean, have you ever been so scared to get up and do a talk or do something that you threw up or before a big event or a game like that it makes you so anxious and you're so afraid or someone give you the most awful news you've ever heard in your life and it makes you puke. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously communication that's going on. That's all a mind that's happening, right? You're freaked out, you're paranoid, you're scared. That's all stuff that's happening in your head. And if it, if it somehow made you throw up, it, there's obviously communication that's happening there. Yeah, they so, call it the gut-brain axis and there's yeah. a direct communication uh, between the gut and the brain, and they're connecting it to all kinds of different things, all and it's a two-way of street. Moods too, like, and we saw, we've talked about this about you know how we visibly see this more, like in our children after they eat certain types of foods, what types of behavior like happen as a result if it's like uh, you know a bunch of sugar, a bunch of simple carbs, like you know what that uh, reaction looks like versus like a different type of like a balanced nutrient meal, uh, you know all these things like it's 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 very visible when when you kind of take yourself out of it look from the outside so yeah totally and again this is probably going to be in the future um there will probably be future treatments uh that uh use gut uh treatments as part of uh therapy i don't know if it'll necessarily be the cure uh by itself although in some cases it might be but i think it'll probably be in combination with other types of treatments because again i mean look i've i've battled with gut issues for a long time Luckily for a while now, I've had zero issues, but I know when my gut is off, man, I definitely don't feel as happy and as calm. Um, and part of it is just not feeling good. The other part of it is just physically, you know, because there are, you, you know, there are emotional uh, components to depression and anxiety, mm-hmm. but there's also physical components. You can also have a physical body that just feels down and depressed. This is how medications will treat it. When people take an SSRI, it's like they're 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 not fixing the problems in your life, but maybe mm-hmm. it's helping with the physical feeling uh, of those things. Next question is from Ty Finicum. What's something you've taken for granted that has come to light during the coronavirus situation? And as a result, what will you do differently once you're back to normal? You know, it's interesting is that we were kind of talking about this already, right? Yeah. Early in the intro. Yeah. And, you know, while we're having conversation, like my mind's been spinning about that. Um, 
because I, I knew it, why it was happening. And then having to say it on this podcast made me really think about it. And now my, my brain's been going like, you know, what am I, how now I realize that now, how, how can I organize something for my family? And so I have two, I have two brother-in-laws that are like uh, musically talented. Both of them play the guitar and have incredible voices. And one of my, my personal favorite, and I'm pretty sure most of my family members' favorite things to do is to get together as a family. And these are uh, opposite sides, right? So actually never do the, the two of them get together. We've never, both my brother-in-laws that are the musicians have never uh, been at the same family party or whatever that. They're on different sides of the family, but both very talented. And both sides of these families love to get together, have food, have some wine, and then play music. And I was just thinking, you know what I should do? That would be fucking really cool. So I'm going to talk to each one of them individually. And I'm even going to offer to pay for their time, an hour. You know, hey, I'll pay you to play for $100 or something an hour uh, for the family once a month that we just make a consistent time that we on Sunday, the first Sunday of every month uh, that you play for one hour and we all get it on a Zoom and enjoy it together. And I just think that would be so rad. Yep. And something that we had never done before, and I wouldn't even have thought to do that with uh, with until this whole COVID situation. And you know, who knows? Maybe both sides of my family start getting together, and if it becomes a regular thing, and you know, we've got everybody on there and enjoying music and seeing each other. And uh, I, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I mean, I literally have just like that just came to mind as we were talking about this because that was something that I noticed. I thought, you know what? Um, we don't, as, as much as we all do get together as a family, we don't do that that consistently. Uh, that, and that could be a very easy thing that I make as a, a monthly thing that we all do. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. I love that idea. I, um, I'm, I'm on the same wavelength. I, as much as I value family, um, I realize that I, took, uh, that I took a lot of it for granted. And what I mean by that is I see certain parts of my family regularly. I see my parents you know, at least once a once a week, maybe we'll have dinner together, or whatever. I'll see my siblings, you know, you know, twice a month, maybe once a month, maybe. I have cousins and stuff that you know I'll see at big family events, but I don't see a lot of them enough. And what's actually happened is because of this, because I think all of us want to check in on each other, and we do love each other. My, I, you know, my cousins and I, we 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 care for each other. My aunts. And uncles, although I only see them for birthdays and Christmas and stuff like that, we definitely care for each other. And what's ended up happening is we're contacting contacting each other more often than we ever have through FaceTime uh, and and through that type of stuff. And I'm really enjoying it. And I'm realizing I don't have a relationship with a lot of these people aside from the big family functions. And I did take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, and it, that's what I do now. So on a on a uh, weekly basis now. Jessica and I will, you know, we'll sit down. Actually, on mostly days, daily basis, we'll sit down and be like, "Who haven't we Facetime recently?" You know, oh, my brother. Oh, my cousin. Let's get them on. It's ten yeah. minutes. Ten minutes on the phone, Facetime. And I think I'd like to keep doing that. I think, uh, I think I, you know, as much as I value family, I still took some of it for granted. That's for sure. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you guys on that. I, I do think too. One thing that uh, I've really uh, been stoked on uh, that we've started to kind of do with, with our own family and our kids, um, besides always just kind of going outside with them, horsing around, you know, doing like activities outside and, and, and enjoying the sun and climbing and all that, which has been great. We've designated like an hour of just creative uh, time. And so this is something like we have been able to like my oldest, for instance, has started to draw a comic and, and he's really getting into that. And like, I've never seen them really gravitate to doing uh, artistic things. And, and my youngest is building all these elaborate things right now. And he's really getting into that. And, and then we spend time, uh, all the three of us like learning guitar and I'm kind of walking them through and they're, uh, you know, working their way through that. But it's just something that, uh, you know, besides getting all of the education from school, uh, you know, hanging out with our friends and all that, that's like really like rich time that I get to spend with them. And I want to see if I can maintain that uh, going forward. Yeah. You know, it's something else too, that I never used to do that. Now I do a lot when I would go on walks, uh, cause I would still do walks and stuff regularly just to keep activity or whatever. If I passed by someone or someone's out yeah, in the garage somewhere. or whatever, I never used to say hi to anybody. Oh, that too, yeah. I used to just walk, yeah. you know, walk, do my, my own business. Maybe if I'm with Jessica or the kids, I'm paying attention to them. Now I make it a point to say hi to anybody I pass. or, mm -hmm. or, or and, and on Easter, you know, Jessica and I went through for a walk and we saw people out or whatever. 
And I now that I've been saying hi to people, now they're starting to have conversations. So like I walked by this this lady and she was talking to her neighbor and I said hi and she's like, Hey, how are the how are your 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 babies? How are your kids? How are they doing? And I realized like, oh, she knows I have kids because I've walked by now several times and said hi. Mm -hmm. And so we're starting to build that that community feel that I didn't have before. Hundred yep. percent took that for granted before. And with that, uh, go to mindpumpfree.com, download all of our guides, resources, and books. I'm going to start with the Ben shout out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, what's his last name? Lawson. Okay. And what was his deal again? Leukemia? Leukemia. All right. Hey, before we sign off, um, I do want to wish one of our listeners and friends, uh, Ben Lawson, mm -hmm. uh, we want to wish you good health. Uh, and, and if you could send him your, pr your prayers... Um, and good vibes. That would be awesome. He's he's battling uh, with uh, leukemia right now. He's been listening to us for a long time. Yeah, he was up to like six hundred pound, like deadlift, and he was he was really strong and just got hit hard. Really, really good dude. So Ben, you're you're on our minds. Uh, we hope you do well. Hang in there, buddy. Uh, and with that, go to mindpumpfree.com. Download all of our guides, resources, and books. They're all totally free. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.